I think we should start. Paul, are you okay? My All right, well, then I will call this day. meeting of the Elsery Planning Commission into session. Judy, would you please take the roll? Yes, Reed. Here. Askland. Yes. Pelzell. Yes. Stiles. Here. Also present is John Young, the Assistant Village Manager and Planning and Zoning designee for the village at this point. Hello. So before we start on the agenda, there's some things I'd like to say. One, I want to welcome John um, and Rose and Susan. Thanks for volunteering. Um, secondly, I, got, I would like to thank Bill Bebko and John Strewing. Absolutely. Whose places you took, uh, they served this commission in the village many years through thick and thin and um, um, really made important contributions. And then, and then lastly, I'd just like to note the passing of John Eastman. Um, John appeared before this group multiple times, contributed with his his knowledge of the village, not only as a longtime resident, but um, but as a civil engineer. Um, and what more than that, I mean, he helped um, immensely on um, developing the comprehensive plan. I mean, he took a mishmash of ideas and put it into a form and into a document that could be reviewed and edited and refined. And that was just a huge benefit. I think Lori will back me up on that. I mean, we struggled Absolutely. for a long time. Yeah, no, that was really important. We and so I just. Yeah. I just like to note John's contributions and, and pass along my condolences to his family. So, um, with that, John, would you like to say a few words about uh, what brought you here and uh, your background, just as a way of introduction? Oh, sure. Well, um, I, my name's John Young. I'm it's my beginning of my second week here in, in the village, and. Um, I'm a certified planner. I I just left uh, the city of Bellevue, Kentucky, which is a small city located on the Ohio River across from downtown Cincinnati. Uh, I worked there for eight years as a zoning administrator. Um, I received my uh, master's degree in community planning from the University of Cincinnati uh, School of Planning out of the DAP program in 2013. Um, I was pretty instrumental in developing the city of Bellevue's comprehensive plan and their form-based code, and I uh, started on the second plan, but. Uh, have not been able did not was not able to finish it before I left uh, and came here. Um, Yellow Springs is is one of those those amazing small towns that you know aspires to the uh, the principles of great uh, you know great ur uh, walkability and an ur a vibrant urban um, eclectic downtown and also has uh, plenty of opportunities and uh, challenges uh, of a small and, and growing village. Uh, so I'm happy to to come here and, and lend my talents and skills and uh, and do some great things here with you guys. Thanks. Okay. Great. Um, obviously, we can't do the minutes since there's just two of we us. Can. Just we'll two have to wait till Tim is, and so we may may just plan to do those in February. And, and you know, I found some typos and some things. I'll just go ahead and give them to you, Judy. That'd be so great. You yep. Can and then we just. Yeah, then just get it back to us with the corrections in mm -hmm. February, and we'll go over it then. Okay. Um, uh, what was your What was your next plan then? Well, at that point, I don't think we have any communications. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Well, maybe we could. Maybe since we're kind of doing introductions, oh, that's perfect. Um, we could introduce have our our new people introduce themselves and uh, relation to the village and interest in planning and that sort of thing and what your kind of background is kind of what John just did sure do you want to go first or uh, sure um, I'm Rose Pelzel I am 24 and I grew I've lived in the village all my life um, I'm currently a full-time student at Sinclair in their um, surveying and architectural science program um, so and uh, my um, family has been involved in, my grandmother was a, on the planning commission I think and um, uh, ha I'm very interested in the local history and especially like planning history and Yale Springs I think has some pretty interesting um, problems in zoning and opportunities and um, I uh, like this kind of work so that's why I volunteered to be on the planning commission. Well thanks for volunteering. Yeah. And I'm Susan Stiles. I've lived in Miami Township I think since about 74. Um, I've lived 
in Yellow Springs initially for around 20, 25 years. I've lived out in the township, um, I think for like about 17, 18 years, just in the township. And my background is, um, I'm a um, master's in public administration, bachelor's in social work. I started out with um, family violence, um, was the first director, started the program. And so I went through uh, planning commissions in Xenia in trying to get the places where we had as the shelter, because that was a conditional use <laughs> in some of the areas. Uh, and then in my most recent last job, which I retired from, I am retired, um, I was director, first assistant director, then director of Green Metropolitan Housing Authority. And as we did development, um, dealt with planning uh, commissions uh, for various things, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so, um, which is just a part of it. <laughs> uh, I also served on the Economic Sustainability Commission, and part of that was we were very aware of uh, planning and uh, zoning and how important it is to the community and different things that we were uh, looking at in that plan. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and maybe just since John is new, we can all kind of do a little introduction since we don't have a lot going on. That's true. <laughs> um, I've been on the council um, for seven years. This is my last uh, year of my second four-year term. And I've been on planning commission that whole time. And I've lived in Yellow Springs for 17 years. And I'm a professor up at Wittenberg University, English and Women's Studies. So it doesn't have an immediately obvious connection <laughs> to planning. Um, but my, my actual research actually focuses a lot on public policy and the way it affects people's lives. So. Um, I'm interested in storytelling and the way we tell stories and how um, that can be influenced by different policies that are in place, in my case, for um, adoptive foster children, children in orphanages, children who are, whatever, for whatever reason, outside the social, the normative family structure. So um, so that's, uh, that's where I come from, um, and uh, I've, I've really enjoyed being on planning commission. Matt? Well, I'm a, by training a hydrogeologist. Uh, I work as a project manager for a firm in, uh, in Columbus that builds large water supplies for municipalities and industry all over the U.S. Like uh, Susan and Lori, I'm new to town. I uh, moved here and <laughs> first the first time in 1984. I've uh, been <laughs> back and forth a few times, unlike Rose, who's she's the only native here in the bunch, <laughs> and maybe Jerry. <laughs> the, um, um, but uh, I've been on planning commission I think since 2008. Um, um, unfortunately, I've been chairman for too long. I was uh, been looking for a replacement <laughs> sometime. So um, I've got my eye so on some of our new members Susan here. <laughs> Rose, feel free to step up uh, once you get comfortable with things. Um, <laughs> But again, I think it's uh, I mean it's a uh, it's an interesting way to contribute to the village, and it's uh, uh, it's been pretty enjoyable for the most part. So, for the most part, yeah, absolutely. Never moments. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, um, we have no communications. Do we have any citizens' comments? This is a time where citizens can comment on anything that uh, is not on the agenda, and since we have such a thin agenda, i.e., nothing. Um, Paul, please identify yourselves for the uh, Channel 5 uh, crowd. Um, there were two uh, documents on the table for this meeting, but I guess they're next meeting. Like, since they're not on the agenda for this meeting, I'd like to address them briefly. Uh, could you the, tell me about those uh, documents? The request oh, okay. for uh, the, the alley vacate. The right of way vacation right. and the alley vacation. Between Allen Street and Limestone Street, depends on where you count, there's eight streets. There's no cross of Antioch campus that distance. Uh, it would be good to keep one of those at least uh, open for utilities, for emergency services, for possible thoroughfare uh, between Cor uh, Corey Street and uh, Xenia Avenue. So either one would, would be adequate. 
but I, I think you should keep one of them at least. Hey, Paul, from your involvement with the fire department, do you know if the one, um, uh, is it Center is it Center College? North. North College. Is that considered a fire lane by the fire department? I'm not sure. It's certainly been used as that. Yeah. Okay. So and there are utilities under the Herman Street extension from what we heard last week. Okay. That, so that will still that will be maintained at least as a utility corridor. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? Um, John has a couple of ideas that it might be nice for him to throw your direction because they've come up as as issues repeatedly, and and uh, he and I have been talking about a number of them. Just to sort of, I think for you folks to be able to give him some some direction. I mean, it's like filled with energy and ready to research things and get things done, and um, which is pretty great. And we talked about interior lot lines. We've talked about okay, so a number of different that. things. So he's kind of ready to take some lead and bring back ideas for you folks. And I mean, I think it, it might be a great time to set some some things a little ways out on the agenda because mm -hmm. he's he's ready to go and okay. I think we could you know maybe get some of those things even the issue of signage you know who puts mm -hmm. up the signs and how is that done and um, so we've we've had a number of really good conversations that do you want me to talk about all that stuff <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, maybe just get a sense of where might this go on an agenda well what the other thing is I mean I think I have a, like a running list of things that I think that we found in the code that kind of bothered me. Yeah, as well, we start and, applying and I know that Steven Anderson was keeping track of them. Do you have like any any of the things that were already tracked as things that were wrong with our code? I have the files from Tamra mm -hmm. on, on the local server. Um, mm -hmm. I have to go through them to find stuff, that, right. that type of stuff. So. I, uh, I haven't found any document as of yet, but okay. it might be in there somewhere. Because he had a his, his copy of the um, zoning code had all of these tabs in it of places that he he had found and he and Tamara had found weren't working, and I was wondering if that got lost in the transition because it would be probably at least a good place to start. I have yet to find an actual printed copy of the zoning code. The new um, zoning code, the the old zoning code with tabs, I have that. Right, uh, but it's not That's very useful. Not very useful, no, because we definitely were planning this year to go through the code and and make a kind of a wholesale set of. Uh, well, maybe the Ken LeBlanc might have that in Xenia. Mm -hmm. I mean, as part yeah, of Stevens. Yeah, he might. Mm -hmm. He might. So yeah, we, you might talk to Ken LeBlanc and Xenia to find out All if right. he's got if that was left in that office. Otherwise, I guess you'll have to just uh, work from whatever you whatever you can find. Yeah, and also whatever I you know, find on my own as far as trying to enforce the code or trying to regulate it for people who want to do things. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one of the biggest things, uh, and Judy mentioned this. Uh, I, I met with with her about like what are the biggest challenges to your zoning code right now? Uh, is the interior lot line kerfuffle? I guess I like a better phrase and um, so I've been spending a couple I spent a couple of days actually the last week doing a lot of research as to how we can address uh, interior lot lines as whether it be a, a interpretation of the uh, of the zoning official or if it would be a, an actual text amendment into the code and I've actually, today I've actually found um, some language that might be able to put the whole thing to rest as far as a, a permitting uh, these lots to be to not be subdivided, but to still to be considered as one single lot. There will be a mm -hmm. uh, there's something called a zoning lot. It's mm -hmm. a definition that uh, basically takes into account whether or not the uh, the parcels, even though they're separate, are deeded to the same entity. Mm -hmm. And uh, different cities or different municipalities have different ways about going about how to make that official, whether it be an mm -hmm. application to the zoning department that they would then file, it would be part of the record of their property, uh, whether it be a covenant or a deed restriction that um, stays with the properties as long as they're transferred, um, 
or whether it just be a simple, a simple uh, administrative definition. I'm still trying to look at uh, which way, look at the different options to kind of present to you guys, which way it might be the best way to move forward on that. But there are uh, examples elsewhere of other places running into this problem, and that's what I'm looking at, finding out how they addressed it and figuring out which one's the best one for us. Um, there is a, a form that um, goes to the village manager, I think, in the zoning code now, that if you like have a dis you know legal description, the, the village manager signs off on replatting them together. And that so you're saying like keep keeping the interior lot lines, um, you know, legally, but zoning enforcing, not recognizing them. Uh, correct. I mean, the, the the application is for a replat, which would basically mean the property owners, the owner of a, the owner of a property that would be is multiple lots. They would have to hire a surveyor, uh, do a survey plat, and then the village manager would sign off on that, and that would then be recorded at the county. Um, this interpretation would uh, would actually uh, circumvent that process. Would have, um, and actually, it's it's used in all manners of places from New York City to to uh, Dayton, Ohio, to Miamisburg. Mm -hmm. I found uh, several examples in the local area as well. So, and what would really surprise me was that New York City had it, uh, mm -hmm. out of all places. So, mm -hmm. um, it's something that seems to be a fairly standard. Uh, just different. There are different paths to go about doing it. Mm -hmm. It would be less expensive and time consuming for the property owner, is basically. That's correct, yes. It would, and it for would, village staff. What's that? And for village staff. And for village staff, yeah. That seemed like it's a good perfect idea. solution. You know, the other thing, we talk about lot lines. I know that uh, zoning appeals, BZAs, had some issues with respect to definitions of, of setbacks and how they're measured with respect to roof line versus foundation. And so when you're looking at setbacks, that's something that probably to add to your list and, and talk to. I don't know who was on zoning appeals. That was Ted and Steve Kahn. And You're talking as far as like defining where the front yard yeah. and the where side yard. Where that line is measured from, where that distance. Where on the edifice. <clears throat> Whether you can measure from the gutter. <laughs> yeah, so do you have any the extended doorknob. eave? Or is <laughs> There's it, uh, been quite a lot of discussion on this topic. And it's, before, it's not Good. defined. Um, mm -hmm. In my experience, and I, it's, it's not if it's not defined in the code. My experience has been, it's actually to the wall of the principal structure. So, um, for front yard, it would be the front door, the porch, or the, or anything coming off of the front door would not, uh, be, would not be the start of the front yard. The front, the start of the front yard would be the front door, hmm. um, and uh, that kind of allows for some more flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think they have some issues with like a semi-permanent awning and some things like that too. Okay. That just were definitely you know this gray area that just was not well defined in the in the code. Yeah, and I'd have to see what that situation was to see, if, um, you know, what the intent of the code, if the intent of the code is being met, and how you know how that was addressed or what the factors were involving in that. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, so so we have interior outlines, we have def definition of setbacks. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, uh, Lori, as you mentioned, uh, signage. Mm -hmm. um, I took a look at the signage ordinance today, and um, <clears throat> I could use a lot of work. Uh, one of the things that I found as a glaring omission was uh, the, the, the lack of sandwich board regulations. Apparently, they're just not allowed. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, right. for a historic Main Street as Yellow Springs has, kind of is baffling. So, mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I was looking at like, the signage code or I was looking for, uh, uh, actually I was looking for uh, regulations controlling uh, setting out stuff into the right-of-way mm -hmm. and what if the village code had any type of uh, parameters for that. I didn't find anything in the zoning code, so that might be something that I might have to come in and, and figure out a way to address that mm -hmm. as well. Well, we have people who habitually set things in the right-of-way and mm -hmm. for extended periods of time, which mm -hmm. creates problems with Yep. A lot of things. Well, we had the same. We had the same issues in Bellevue. We had a, a historic downtown area. They would set out their, their merchandise, and sometimes they would just leave it out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, trying to well, balance those. Picnic those tables. Concerns. I think this one. <laughs> uh, with respect to the size, the other thing when we were doing the um, the Morgan family um, deal, mm -hmm. 
last meeting uh, for the residence B, the signs are huge that are allowed. Yeah, they're probably I mean, bigger they than they are should be. Twenty-four square feet. And I, it's a residential. I found the signage section to be the hard. I, yeah. I I I would read it and go, I I can't. I, this is just I can't deal. <laughs> I yeah. hope somebody else can can I, I read this and see. Same place. I found it just hard. That's that is one of the hardest sections for me to try to read and imagine, like what this would be and. And so, Except that uh, last month when we were thinking 24 square feet, I was, th I was thinking that is totally disproportionate for the neighborhood. I mean, that doesn't make yeah. any sense. Or 5% of the total furniture. You put uh, a billboard right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it so seems really big. It, it, I thought it was, yeah, way large. Well, we'll definitely have to uh, revisit that. Um, where I come from, residential districts are not allowed to have signage more than one square foot. That's an eight-foot I sign. think that's what it used to be. Yeah. Actually, in the old code, I think it was one square foot, and if, yeah, which and seemed a little small. And that that might be a, on four. the extreme edge of the you know it's mm -hmm. too small maybe too too small mm -hmm. too big. Uh, but the other thing is that like you have a lot of conditional uses coming into residential areas, maybe home occupations or something like that. Yeah, and they should be able to have their own type of sign for whatever their their mm -hmm. conditional uses. Right. So um, try to figure out a balance between. A residential home occupancy with a, a nameplate sign and then mm -hmm. maybe a, a sign for a subdivision entrance or something um, that would be the balance I think well the subdivision entrances are even larger yeah 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 uh, so looking at signage when to redo that uh, making it a little more graphical so you can kind of understand what uh, these signs yeah. are. I uh, think that was actually that 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 puts your finger on the problem I had. I had a hard time picturing them. You know? I, I don't really know what the difference between a gateway sign and a monument sign is mm -hmm. uh, in the code. It, they seem to be relatively the same thing except one's bigger. Mm -hmm. um, sandwich board signs, I like to see those uh, be addressed and then um, just kind of being a little bit more uh, clear I guess I think the, the code just needs to be a bit more clear on what signage is permitted and where mm -hmm. so that's something that I'll be looking at great and then finally I'm um, looking at the zoning permitting fees um, which apparently have not been updated for a few decades hmm. so um, we'll be looking at what the best practices are for those uh, trying to equalize uh, the cost of staff time with the the permitting for uh, conditional uses, variances, and development plan proposals. So um, I'll be, I've got a, a bunch of uh, towns that have been emailing us information about their fee schedule. So I'll be compiling that together pretty soon here and presenting to you guys to, to go over. Great. Mm -hmm. And then actually it's on, <clears throat> it's now on the council agenda to get the recommendation from planning commission regarding those for, for ordinance format. So, okay. Motion. It, you know, the other thing that um, came up last month was just um, uh, notification. And um, uh, the, the village ordinances say, uh, what, adjacent property owners? And historically, this commission has always well exceeded that, John, just for your information, to the point where, I don't know, we may have even been over-noticing in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> But I think it was pretty much a consensus that adjacent might just be not enough um, if you're trying to be inclusive and and, and uh, give the the residents an opportunity to to have a say. And I, I, I think just even just the signage I think has been kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. Just making sure that the the signs are there, that they're correct, that they're correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, getting signs, enough signs made so that if there's a few different properties coming up for review at the same time, we can, you know, have, have them all adequately signed. So um, that notice, noticing has been a problem, yeah. And uh, you may have thoughts about what's the best practice for noticing. Um, Kentucky State statute from where I've worked in Bellevue uh, was also adjacent property owner but the best practice was to make sure that people across the street were also notified or across an alleyway um, most of conditional uses and variances were by certified first-class mail 
So we did send the card with return receipt to make sure that the pro adjacent property owners were uh, received the mailing for the notice. And, um, so that was one of the things that, that we were required to do by state law. Um, going even further back, um, when I was an intern for the city of Zanesville, Ohio, uh, I did the noticing for their planning commission meetings, and that was a um, that was all properties within I think 500 feet. Hmm. So that was where was that Zanesville? Yeah. So those are two different mm -hmm. uh, things that I, I would recommend at least doing the uh, certified mailing for adjacent property owners mm -hmm. and making sure that includes people that are across property owners that are across the street or across the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, that way it ensures that they know a meeting is happening. Mm -hmm. um, we also had signage requirements in Bellevue. However, the uh, property owner was actually responsible for putting up the sign themselves. Ah. Uh, so and that could be an the option. Village responsible here. Yeah, yes. but I don't see how you can make the property owner responsible because we're that's that's interesting, mm -hmm. you know. It's part of the application. I guess. <clears throat> so they have to provide their own sign? Yeah, I would send them a, a notice saying that they had to pr uh, put up a sign made of durable material of letters at least one inch tall stating the date time, the type of thing like conditional use or development plan, the date and time of the meeting, and the contact information for the city. Hmm. Um, and relatively went forward with no fuss or anything like that. So. Hmm. Well, that might be simpler. Because if they want it to go through, they make sure it gets noticed then. Right. And I'm assuming you guys also advertise in the paper as well. Yes, yeah. yes, we do. One of the things that I was kind of toying with in Bellevue before I left was uh, advertising on social media and mm -hmm. uh, putting on the, the official uh, Facebook page or on the Twitter account. And that way we have a, media, a social media presence as well. Um, to sort of piggyback on that, the Planning Commission like minutes and stuff aren't aren't up to date on the website um, so just as a as a Planning Commission member they're not even we stopped posting yeah so all of, all of the all of the council minutes all of the Commission minutes and not but not council minutes but that will change with the new uh, website I assume if we want it to, yes, it will. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's probably a pretty big job to get all stuff well, posted. Well, it was a council decision. When when you have, um, well, here's the issue. It becomes an expectation if it's posted. If your commission is not one that I'm taking minutes keeper for. of, yeah. right. then I might get minutes from you or I might not get minutes from you. It might be a month and a half before you actually get approved minutes because you didn't get a quorum and then you canceled a meeting and then we get these phone calls and irate people saying you've promised to put them up and they're not there and there was a while ago a council decision just to say you know what if they want them they can come get them or we can send them electronically it's very easy to do all you got to do is ask you know you can always be on the mailing list and and they're in the electronic packet for council mm -hmm. so, so therefore they are you know, but you have to dig. It wouldn't be easy yet. I mean, it's much easier to just say, hey, I need the Planning Commission minutes for X, Y, and Z, and then get them. I think it's easier to just be able to access them online. Planning Commission BZA, that's really easy, actually, to do, because I do them. I was actually the other more concerned commissions about the agenda, actually. I said minutes, but, like, agenda's all, always up. Should be. Okay. Huh. It's sent. And that's the other issue that you know we have once control comes back into it becomes my responsibility to post that stuff as opposed to my responsibility to sending it to someone yeah to have them post it but I, I know, might be wrong about the agenda up. being up okay. I mean I when it's not up I hear all about it and get it up pretty darn fast okay now we definitely in council packet I just am thinking about this. We definitely get minutes from like other commissions, but I don't remember seeing planning commission minutes in our packet. Maybe I overlooked them because I see them, but I don't ever remember recently seeing them in our packet. So we might well, want to Well, you summarize planning commission stuff. 
I mean, I, I could do. put minutes mm -hmm. in if you want to do it during. Well, the it's what I. Report, uh, it just seemed. So. I was just noticing that it seemed a little just inconsistent in practice. That we pretty much mm -hmm. any other commission seems to have the minutes in there, and uh, maybe maybe council needs to be more clear about what we want in that packet. Yeah, and it could be you know second meeting of the month you get all the minutes I have, including. Planning Commission, BZA, whatever's approved. Maybe we'll talk about that at, at Council mm -hmm. when we talk about commissions and boards, which is going to be coming up in a, in a meeting soon. Yep. Okay, thanks. That's a bit of a sidetrack, but actually it's kind of helpful sometimes to <laughs> notice yeah. these <clears throat> practices. Yeah, because you're getting a pattern of like, well, didn't we say we wanted it that way? And then you yeah. stop reflecting on it. And mm -hmm. No, it's good to look at it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else, John? Oh, well, that, those are the, the, the top things I'm working on currently. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of more. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bring them up as I, as I find them. And if you guys have any other uh, from experience from when you guys wrote the zoning code, I'd, I'd just get that feedback as well. Well, I mean, it's still re it's relatively new, and so we haven't even essentially applied all sections. So, um, no. In the, re the reality of it is that uh, I mean, we don't know yet how it's going to work a lot of times. And, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely better, I think, than the old one, which was, you know, we were always, we were very, very frequently at sea <laughs> with the old one in terms of put it. there were contradictions, there were big holes, there were there was a lot of vague language, and so it's definitely a huge improvement in many ways on the old code in terms of just working with it and applying it so far as we've gone through it, but. Um, I think definitely it would be a good idea to see if you can get some kind of information from Tamara, uh, um, Tamara at least, and uh, uh, Mr. LeBlanc down there in Xenia uh, to see if they've got any information or even just talking to Tamara about what, what she recalls of uh, areas that, that were unclear. Will do. Okay, um, should we go to agenda planning? I think that would make sense. Sort uh, of thinking not just about next month, but the sure. a little more broad. I mean, broad next month things. we do have the two vacation. Well, do we, though? I, do John, we? do you have <coughs> any more information on that? Because I know that <coughs> there is some new information about what Antioch had decided to, they might have decided to wait on some of this stuff, and I... I don't know anything official. Well, I haven't got anything official yet, but we did meet with Annie Hawk last week, uh, some representatives from there. Uh, they are planning on doing a, uh, a charrette with a, a planning firm to uh, identify infill locations and kind of review their, uh, their master plan. So uh, that will be actually be uh, from March 1st to March 5th. And uh, we've got some flyers that uh, mm -hmm. have been going around the village. Uh, so. Uh, a, I would you know encourage just as as the planning commission uh, in, folks interested in planning to attend, voice your opinions and your inputs for the charrette, mm -hmm. and then B, this could also affect how uh, Antioch is handling these uh, alley vacations because um, they might that might be it should become a factor where mm -hmm. they might need it for something else and not need the vacations anymore. They might use it for as part of their. Uh, overall re-envisioning process. Have the people, is it architects who are working on this with them or is it um, they're, um, a planning firm they're, of some they're, sort? It's a planning firm. Uh, name is, is, uh, is Blaine County. The, the, the principal's name is Victor Dover. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been mm -hmm. uh, consulting with you getting, you know, like... Well, they've been consulting with Antioch. Uh, they've, we just met with them last week for okay. the first time. Yeah. So, so there's um, a little bit of consultation. That's sort of more what I meant. Not, um, so as far as you know, the two right away vacations are on hold for now. Um, for now, we know we'll see what happens. They might come back in February, but they most likely if it'll probably wait until after the the March charrette to see if they identify what they want to do. I'll, I'll send Reggie an email and just get some cl clarification on that because it, there's a little bit of disjointed communication just in that the initial uh, you know information was submitted to Green County Regional Planning or through Tamara, yep. so I'm not sure 
if it's been communicated back here officially, no, we want that off the table for right now. I mean, I haven't certainly gotten that official word, so I'll, I'll track it down. <clears throat> Is there anything else pressing for next month? Well, um, I do have, I don't have an application, but I have someone who uh, wants to build a garage with an accessory dwelling unit on top, so that will be uh, something that will come before you guys either next month or the month after, depending on when he gets his application in. Okay. Did we make that conditional? Yeah, uh, accessory dwelling code? units are conditional uses. Conditional, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I have a question about a Antioch. Um, maybe this is no longer relevant if they're not going to pursue it, but um, uh, I was wondering if the North College Street, um, the part of it, when they when they closed it off, which I think is was probably the late sixties, whether or not they had a agreement with the village about that, and um, you know, just like w if there was one, that's something that we should consider before granting uh, vacating a street that hasn't been used for a really long time, but under what conditions has it not been used mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. that's something we have to go through our archives and dig up and find out what happened there well rose is the person who brought the minutes from 1879 to our last me meeting so she like wins some kind of record for that and i i bring it up all the time because i was just i found it so charming um, but i think it's relevant i mean Absolutely. you know like the the um my understanding of why it was discontinued use is because out of, you know, tourists would use it as a gawking road, that it wasn't really used <laughs> that right? as a road. <laughs> Paul is it, nodding. You know, um, people would just look, stare, want to stare at the hippies. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I, with the union being torn down, I don't know if that would be relevant anymore. and. If it could be opened up as a road, that, you know. that, was, a, that was an actual through street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it wasn't for golfing because there was enough when the end was open. There was enough space where you could actually pull in the highway and park and yeah. walk across, and it was it was paved. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, she, so and then. But my understanding of why they closed it, I don't know if that's actually why they closed it or if that's a, a urban, myth. urban myth, but... Um, well, I thought the village had closed it because they put the, the bar and so forth on it. So I just assumed that... Well, that I think it is worth, it is worth uh, exploring if, if this comes back, especially if this comes mm -hmm. back to us. We should definitely know um, that history, so I'm really glad you brought it up. Okay. Well, if there's not anything else. Um, well, I have one thing. Um, have Judy, have you been doing um, Sunshine Law training at all with like new commission members in and count? Uh, yeah, commission and, and board members at all. I haven't done training. Training. I've provided information, mm -hmm. and I, and I sort of gave the encouragement to take that online training it's way easier to sit through than an actual in-person training yeah there's something and I, it's I, it's the first time they've offered it. it it's a lot more palatable you can kind of do it on your own time and you will gather the same kind of body of information I think it leaves you with a lot of questions once you come out of it any of those trainings leave you going yeah but what about this thing or exactly this thing that we're talking about right now so if you want, if I can give you homework, I would love to have you actually do the, the training and then um, maybe we could arrange to just get together and you can just bounce what questions are left in your mind about it um, around. But one of the nice things is having other folks who are familiar with it and, you know, occasionally you get a little nudge to say, well, hey, don't, if you could ask that in an email or we'll have to wait for a meeting to talk about that or I mean you see, there's some things that it's nothing egregious someone will just remind you oh yeah whoops that's actually kind of kind of a meeting if we all email about it so 
So there are other folks that will pop in as reminders, but just getting that basic training helps a lot if you haven't had it previously. Um, it might be good to just send that link out to everybody. Um, yeah. I wouldn't mind. I could probably uh, use a refresher. Did you give us that link? In, okay. in your letter? Yeah. Okay. So maybe just send an email with it. it. Is it the OhioAttorneyGeneral.gov mm -hmm. email down at the bottom? Yeah, and if you just really want to run home and get some training in tonight, I mean, if you literally just Google Ohio Sunshine Law, there's a link to it on the first page of the um, Attorney General site. So, mm -hmm. and they didn't they didn't previously have that. You could try to plug in specific questions and get them answered. You could go to a forum. This is the first time they've actually walked you through the training online, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think. Um, it's a good it would be a good thing for all council people to know about mm -hmm. so that when we're bringing new people on board we're aware that there's this online training and I um, did put that in my clerk report a little bit ago but I'll you I'll did? I did and I must have read right past it because you know sometimes things just don't sink in <laughs> so I apologize <laughs> um, but yeah you know, it's I mean it's great information so I'll you know I'll bump it back out there again okay yeah. sorry about my uh, Poor reading comprehension, apparently. Might have been, you know, an hour you were really thinking about watching. You know, I get CSI to the end, of, the end of that packet. Training. I admit, my uh, so my focus students, tends to lose a little. The same thing? Probably. <laughs> yes. Yep. That's right. We had that the solar project really was harmed by a violation, or at least yes. a. That's certainly not a very strict following of the Sunshine Laws, and I think there were just people who were on that board who were not, who'd been on for a while, who were not as aware as they should have been. So uh, I think uh, it's good for people, even those of us who've been on for a while, to maybe do a little refresher. It's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I have a training opportunity as well. Uh, mm -hmm. The Cincinnati area APA is hosting a, a workshop, a day workshop on January 30th. It's David J. Allor, Planning and Zoning Workshop. And um, I'll forward the information to Judy so she can send it off, off to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually presenting on parking requirements there that That's day. That's a so, big uh, issue here. <laughs> um, there are other uh, there are other sessions that might be pertinent, one actually involving solar arrays. so. Um, I'll send you the information and also the uh, the workshop seminar list. So Great. you guys Great. take a look at it, and if you want to carpool down or, or meet me down there, you know, let me know. And there is, okay. you know, there is funding available for folks who want to get, mm -hmm. get training. So I mean, mm -hmm. if if that's something that you're able to do, it would be wonderful. Is there other are there other opportunities for planning training? Um, that's the only one that's being offered by the APA Ohio this month, okay. but uh, I'm a member of APA Ohio, so I will let you know, especially if there's one in the Miami Valley region, anytime soon. Also, you know, there are other types of just planning related issues that you can go to that would count as training. Um, there's opportunities to watch videos online, either through the American Planning Association, the CNU, Strong Towns, those are three uh, YouTube channels that Mm -hmm. I'd recommend checking out to learn more about planning issues and and kind of what's going on in the world of planning today. So maybe John, if you can if you can send me those links, I'll put them together. Send out again the Sunshine Law link. Just one email for mm -hmm. sure. your you know just lots of different options for for training possibilities. So training was required in Kentucky, by the way, for all planning and zoning and board of. Uh, <laughs> That's hours? probably very uh, wise. They wanted 16 hours for the zoning official every other year and eight every other year for the commission members. Eight every other year. That's not so Doable. Bad. Doable. More than I've done. <laughs> I've got to say. So um, that's good to know, though. So yeah, if you guys, if anybody wants some of the, wants to get some funding, I mean, I assume our funding might, would it cover uh, mileage expense for driving down? 
Gosh, I don't know if we've done that previously, but... It does cover the registration, though. It covers registration, mm -hmm. your, like, food or whatever, so... Uh, if you carve, if you took a village car, then mm -hmm. you're kind of covered, so... Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, let me know. All right. Definitely. So in terms of our agenda, it seems like it's, it's unclear whether we'll have a meeting next month. It really depends on whether there's actual issues. Yeah, John, we try um, not to meet, just to meet, except for we made an exception. Just for tonight, just for just, me. Just for you. Well, we have new members. And, and, and new because members. we got yeah. new members, because there was this big kind of turnover. I think it's more for new members than for me. <laughs> but um, unless you feel like you would have, I mean, if we want to really start working on some of these issues in the zoning code, of course, you know, we could do that. That that could be potentially enough for a meeting. But I tend to feel like if it's not urgent, let's have a meeting that's, you know, got some meat to it rather than coming in and spending, you know, 45 minutes <laughs> and, then, and then heading, heading yeah. home. Well, and we have to know, given... Uh, notice requirements and e mm -hmm. you may even need it earlier but I know that for the newspaper etc we'd have to know by January 26th mm -hmm. if there were anything I mean, the window for the notification right mm -hmm. and I, I know that the when they need to get materials in is even earlier for yeah, John I, so I, right January 20th sticking my head for some odd reason I okay told that, make, to bring him in. that makes sense so yes. So we'll thing lays yeah. that all out. So. If you can meet the flag for that, just yeah. to say I got nothing, and if it's I don't have anything by the twentieth, then let, yeah, let, let me you know. know, and we'll okay. okay, great, cool. And then yeah, it, if you can maybe have a sense for like when you when you want to bring any of the any of the items that you listed tonight, if you want you have a sense for when you want to bring those before us and propose a timetable right. um you know yeah and maybe we have a special meeting with you know three or four of those items instead of some other it, it, it could be All depending right. on how unbusy or right you know that if we are if we're not that busy and you get you feel like you've got a few things ready we could have a meeting just to work on those for sure all right i did want to ask the process if we know that we're not going to be able to attend the meeting in March, I have a prior engagement, mm -hmm. okay. um, and we'll be out of town. Typically, um, we just tell, just tell Judy. Judy, and we usually try not to say that we're going to be out of town on TV. I feel like you'll let me. We know it's hot, so, you know, it's a big deal. So, do we have um, applicants for the um, alternate position? I uh, was hoping. I had somebody, but it turns out the way our ordinances were written, that won't well, work. I, ha I so. have someone in mind. You have too. someone in mind? Okay, Ooh, yeah, just I thought maybe would. Okay. talk to me afterwards. Um, Jerry's here, and he's been doing interviewing with me. So. I just I need to get him to apply. So right, and I didn't know if it was. I I told him I'd uh, I'd see how the if you had someone in mind because it's you said you had a couple people I, who were gonna apply. I had an idea and uh, it, it all fell through so absolutely I'd love to have somebody for alternate and it actually it was very helpful to have someone as an alternate when we had one it was Crystal was a great alternate yeah Jerry you had your hand is up is the, uh, the council I guess I'm you alternate yeah he's uh, my council alternate can I be added to the uh, yeah absolutely whatever and so that uh, yes so I can stay up to speed as I to agree because you know, I know you were saying that you're you've got some additional duties coming on you this year mm -hmm. uh, especially towards the end yeah because yeah. I, I plan on uh, attending attending all the meetings now mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> no, that's great. Least, Absolutely, you know, you'll. You know, so I'm up to speed on what's, yep. what's going mm -hmm. on. Okay. Is there anything else? I think there's a football game. If not, do we have a motion to <laughs> adjourn? So move. And what is second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Woohoo! Thank you, everyone. Thank you.